Hello, mathophiles. In this video, we are going to look at multiplication of complex numbers. And in the next video, we will actually prove that non-zero complex numbers form a group under multiplication. However, for this video, we're going to review the definition of multiplication and show how to use the axioms of a group to actually find the formulas for inverses. So we recall that the set of complex numbers is the set of all numbers of the form a plus b times i, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative 1. And we're not going to use it much in this video, but it's worth pointing out that one way to think of complex numbers is as points in two-dimensional space where the real part, a, is your x-coordinate, and the imaginary part, b, is your y-coordinate. And yes, I already started using terminology like real and imaginary parts. The real part, is, the imaginary part is the coefficient of i, and the real part is the other number. So one of the first things you get used to with complex numbers is that for any complex number, by definition, it must be able to be written as a plus bi for some a and b and r. Likewise, if I take another complex number, say y, I should be able to write y as c plus di for some real numbers c and d. Note, I am writing c and d because I am not assuming y and x are the same complex number. They might be the same, they might not. And so, as always with mathematics, I'm going to use different variable names to indicate that they might be different. So one thing you can do is take these two numbers and multiply them together. Well, by substitution, x is a plus bi, and y is equal to c plus di. Well, we can FOIL, like we do in high school algebra, first, outer, inner and last, and that's what I have here. And then we can simplify a little bit by moving this i to the right and grouping these two i terms together as i squared. And then we note that since i is the square root of negative 1, i squared is just negative 1. And so this is actually, the last term is actually negative b times d. And we note that we have this common factor of i on these two middle terms. So the upshot here is that we can group these two outer terms, the first and last term, together, and group the two inner terms together. And if you do that, you see that we have this formula. And by doing it this way, we um, factor out that common factor of i in the two middle terms. And what do we have? This first term here is a difference of a product of real numbers, so it is a real number. And this coefficient of i is the sum of product of real numbers, so it is also a real number. And so the point is, if you multiply two complex numbers, things of the form real number plus real number times i, you end up with something of the form real number plus real number times i. So the product of any two complex numbers is a complex number. More importantly, you now have a formula for how to multiply two complex numbers. So instead of foiling every single time, you just memorize it's first minus last plus outer plus inner times the imaginary number. So for example, if x is 1 plus 2i and y is 2 minus i, the first part is 1 times 2, the last part is 2 times negative 1, because of course this last coefficient is actually negative 1, and the inner parts are, well the outer part is 1 times negative 1 and the inner part is 2 times 2, and so we get this calculation which is 4 plus 3i. 
which we see is also a complex number, exactly as our formula says it should be. Which is good, because otherwise we might be convinced that we've lost our marbles.